Hey, do you want to take a road trip through Texas in the middle of the summer? Welcome to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and we once again have a fantastic show for you. Stick around to the very end to catch all of the action. Today, we are revisiting another horror classic and another of my favorite movies of all time. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, released in 1974. This film tells the story of a group of friends on a road trip through Texas in the hottest part of the summer. When they need gas for their van, they stumble upon a seemingly empty house, but nothing could prepare them for the absolute depravity and terror they would experience. It was directed by Toby Hooper, who co-wrote the script with Kim Hinkle. It stars Marilyn Burns, Jim Seidel, Edwin Neal, and Gunnar Hansen as Leatherface. This would be the first of nine films currently in the franchise. Like Halloween, this franchise also has a few different timelines, with some of them even feeling like an alternate universe due to the inclusion of different families or changing of the original Sawyer name. And also like Halloween, I'm ignoring everything that came after this film. We're going to look at it as a standalone film. Like I said, this is a revisited review, meaning that I have covered this film before, but it deserves another look. A rematch, if you will. Plus, I figured with the release of the game, this is the perfect time to talk about it. That being said, let's head down to the ring to get this show started. The film opens with a haunting narration from John Larroquette, which he would lend his voice to three more times in the 2003 remake and its 2006 prequel, and finally in the 2022 requel. Through his narration, he tells us a condensed version of the events of the film, and it immediately lets you know that you're in for something unlike anything you've ever seen before. A grave robbery has occurred at a cemetery near Newt, Texas, and whoever did it created this insane monument made out of corpses and other body parts and put it on display for the world to see. A group of five friends are traveling in their van through the area. Sally Hardesty and her brother Franklin, who is in a wheelchair, have a grandfather buried in the cemetery, so they stop to check it out. Also in the van are Kirk, Pam, and Jerry, who is Sally's boyfriend. They continue along down the road when they pass a slaughterhouse causing Franklin to annoy his friends with stories of his family's history in the business. Oh yeah, did I mention that Franklin took this big tumble down a pretty big hill while he was taking a pee? They pick up a hitchhiker, which today we all know is a horrible idea, who tells them that his family also has a history working in a slaughterhouse. He begins acting very strange, and when the group refuses to pay for a picture he took of Franklin, he snaps. He slices Franklin's arm open and smears some sort of bloody symbol on the side of the van as they kick him out. The van is low on gas, so they stop at this disgusting-looking station with a sign that reads W.E. Slaughter. The owner says he has no fuel and recommends that the group stay there and eat some of his barbecue. We get a look at this barbecue, and I think I would pass on that. They leave the station and continue on. They arrive at a nearby abandoned house that was owned by Sally and Franklin's grandfather. After exploring for a few minutes, Kirk and Pam leave to go look for an old swimming hole, but find another house nearby instead. The house was running on generators, so Kirk has this idea of trading for some gas to get them back to town. Kirk enters the house, and a moment later, we get the debut of Leatherface, who attacks Kirk with a hammer, killing him. And then we get the iconic metal door slamming shut. Pam enters the house next and finds the living room is covered with human and animal bones. She is horrified and disgusted and tries to escape but is caught by Leatherface right as she gets out the door. He hangs her on this giant meat hook and we hear her screams of pain as he starts up his chainsaw to dismember Kirk. Later on, Jerry leaves the siblings to go look for Kirk and Pam. He enters this death trap of a house as well and finds Pam's nearly dead body in a freezer. Leatherface hits the hammer KO out of nowhere, killing Kirk. I know there are some people who say Kirk could have survived because we never see the remains of his body, but I'm not buying it. Then we get this moment that I think a lot of people glance over. Leatherface frantically looks around the house to make sure nobody else is there. He looks scared, he sits down and has to calm himself to relieve the fear and anxiety that he's feeling. He didn't go out hunting these people. They came into his home and he was scared. He was trying to protect himself from them and his own family, which we'll talk about in a minute. But that night, Sally and Franklin are by the van honking the horn trying to figure out where their friends are. 
After a short argument, they decide to go and search for them. Also, I just gotta say it here. Franklin, to me, is one of the most irritating characters ever. I understand that his friends see him as a nuisance and his sister just puts up with him because she has to, but he annoys the living crap out of me. I feel bad for the guy because he goes through some stuff in this movie, but he just gets on my nerves. Mo moving on now. The sibling duo sets off into the trees armed with nothing but a flashlight. Sally struggles to push her brother's wheelchair for a while before Franklin tells her to stop because he hears something. That's when a wild leather face appears and revs his chainsaw. Sally and Franklin scream in terror. Sally, I hear something. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Franklin is killed as Leatherface uses the chainsaw on him, making him the only person actually killed with a chainsaw in this film. Sally takes off running with Mr. Face and Chase. Eventually, she comes to the home, not realizing whose it is. Upstairs, she finds Grandpa, who's the best at killing. Just ask the cook. You always said he's the best! <laughs> he's the best, all right. Also, Leatherface chainsaws the door while chasing Sally, setting up my favorite line in the film. Sally escapes again and is chased to the gas station before he vanishes. The owner of the station, who we come to know as the cook, comforts her for a moment before beating her and subduing her. He puts her in the truck and takes her back to the house. Along the way, they meet the hitchhiker and the cook berates him for what he did at the cemetery earlier. They get back to the house where we finally hear the best line delivery of all time. They bring Sally inside as the cook threatens and belittles the hitchhiker and Leatherface, further proving that he is just scared the whole time and is kind of forced into doing these things by his family. They bring Grandpa downstairs and cut Sally's finger open to give him a little drink, proving that this family is a family of cannibals. Mmm, blood. Sally faints, and when she regains consciousness the next morning, she is tied up to a demented dinner table. The family bickers and argues before deciding to kill her with a hammer. They try to let Grandpa do it. He is the best, after all. He's the best, all right. But he's too weak to get the job done and keeps dropping the hammer. Sally breaks free, throws herself out the front window. The sun shows all of the physical trauma that she's endured over the last night. She struggles to her feet and tries to escape, but the family doesn't let her get away that easily. We hear the chainsaw rev up and the hitchhiker chases her down the driveway. He slashes at her back with his knife over and over. Now in the road, an oncoming truck runs over the hitchhiker, killing him. He looks like a freaking rag doll. Leatherface is now caught up as well. Sally and the driver of the truck run away, and this driver throws a wrench at Leatherface, causing him to fall down and cut his leg with the chainsaw. Sally flags down another truck passing by, but the truck driver just keeps running for some reason. But Sally does finally get in the back of that other truck and barely escapes just before Leatherface gets her. She laughs almost maniacally, showing the emotional and mental trauma she's been through. She seems completely messed up, and honestly, who wouldn't be? The film closes with Leatherface in the middle of the road, flailing his chainsaw around. This film is another one of my favorites, and this film is one of the few things I've ever seen that genuinely makes me uncomfortable. But that's by design. This entire film, from beginning to end, is insane, depraved, and dirty. And I love it. I don't think Toby Hooper and Kim Hinkle could have possibly imagined this film would become as iconic as it did. And to this day, it is considered one of the scariest movies ever made, and I agree with that sentiment. But... Before we go any farther, we have to take a break. Stick around for more WWH action. If you're looking to save 20% off of your total order from Redcon1.com, look no further because I have the perfect deal for you. Use code ANDREWDREAMER right now at checkout to receive 20% off of your entire order. That's code ANDREWDREAMER. You just type it into the little promo code box at the bottom of your checkout screen and you will receive 20% off. Go check out their website, get some supplements, get some t-shirts, anything you want, they will have. Make sure you go check it out and use code ANDREWDREAMER when you're checking out. We are back, and without wasting any time, let's head right back down to the ring for more action. When I look for 
positives in this movie, I immediately think of Leatherface. The way Gunnar Hansen portrays the character is perfect. He's got the right look, the right stature. He's one of the scariest slasher villains of all time, and I think one of the most misunderstood characters of all time as well. Edwin Neal and Jim Seedow also bring um, a lot of intensity to their roles. They're scary in their own way. The third act of this film is so intense. Basically, from the time Franklin is killed, there is no downtime, and it's just go, go, go. But the dinner scene is disturbing on a whole nother level. This film also has the distinction of being a pre-Halloween slasher, one of the first instances of a film having a final girl. The thing is, I could go on and on about things I like about this movie, but I'll stop there for now. I don't want to go over time. But leave a comment with what you like about this movie, and we'll keep talking there. On to the negatives now. My biggest negative is Franklin. I understand that this character is meant to get on your nerves to an extent, but he's just too much for me. And if I'm being honest, the third act kind of can get overstimulating at some points because of all the cuts and the noises. Again, that's the point, but I still got to point it out. And this film does suffer from the same audio issues that plagued a lot of low budget movies from that era. And honestly, that's about it. Those are my biggest issues with the film. Our show is coming to an end, but I love this movie so much. As weird as it may sound, it's a comfort movie for me. There are a few movies I can watch when I'm not feeling the best and they just make me feel better. This is one of them. So let me know down in the comments what movie that you can watch when you're feeling down. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. We're on the road to 500 and that's the goal for the end of the year. Thank you for all of the support on this channel. I hope you enjoyed yourself today. Stay tuned in for all of the WWH action that will be coming your way very, very soon. Until next time, my name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.